to me. She said, well, uh, you know, you used to be uh, quicker to anger. Uh, you wouldn't spend as much time. You didn't talk as much about your faith. What happened? She asked me what happened. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I said, uh, well, as you get older, you learn um, from mistakes. Uh, you begin to love people in a different sort of way. You understand that you when, cannot When would you be, say you, you changed? Well, I think it was evolutionary. I think it happened. Part of it is when you get outside of a cocoon, when you live in a society or in a place or in a family, and then you begin to live in other places. I think part of it was when I came to my hometown of Pascoe, a blue-collar community. Everybody worked in the shipyard or the paper mill. Uh, when I got out of uh, uh, college, got into law school, I studied, started studying uh, civil rights suits, uh, the Civil Rights Act of 1964. Remember, I wrote a paper on it for my constitutional law. But, but I think it really happened when I uh, started to uh, move in, uh, around statewide. And I went into the poorest part of the state. I saw poverty I'd never seen before. But I you saw would say that you would have system. changed by the 90s. Oh, yeah. Fair? I, 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 I was uh, very much uh, changing, but it, it wasn't uh, complete. In fact, it's never complete. You never, you're not a perfect person. I, I have made mistakes, and uh, I'm sure I'll make more. Let's go down the list and, and, and find it and find why people find it hard to believe, those in the civil rights community in particular, that this is nothing but contrition because you find yourself in a rough spot. You voted against the King holiday. You voted against funding the King Commission after the holiday was put forth. You voted against the Civil Rights Act of 1990. You voted against uh, the Voting Rights Act, the extension of it, uh, in, in 1992. There are a myriad of uh, opportunities to say to the black community, you know what, I'm for you. Uh, NAACP, voting rights, civil rights uh, chart here, they gave you an F. The conference on civil rights, a failing grade, your connection with the Council for Conservative Citizens, many see that as a white supremacist group. All of this in place, it is hard for people to believe that you change. Well, let me respond to that if I could. There are a number of things that I've done in recent years that I think would show that I, I have been changing. Legislation I've uh, sponsored, bills that I've moved. But I don't want to, again, I don't want to give a, a list of litany. Let me, let me talk about the issues you raised. Let's talk uh, about the King holiday. I want to talk about the King holiday. I want to go back to that. Uh, I'm not sure we in America, certainly not uh, you know, white America and and the people in the South fully understood who this man was, the impact he was having on the fabric of this country. But you certainly understood it by the time that vote came well, up, Senator. Well, uh, but... Uh, you knew who Dr. King was at that point. I did, but I've learned a lot more since then, and I, I want to I make this point very clearly. Uh, I have a, a, a high appreciation for him being a man of peace, a man that was for nonviolence, a man that did change this country. I made a mistake, uh, and I now... I would vote now for Martin Luther King holiday. All right, let me do this. Let me take a break. We'll come back with more right after this. Back with Trent Lott. Uh, Senator, it, it, if we look at this in its totality, a man who clearly, as far as the civil rights community, voted almost lockstep against them in all of the legislation they felt would forward this country, when you look at the past that you've acknowledged, when you look at some of the verbiage that you've used suggesting a, in terms of the King holiday, the fact that we've not done it made a holiday for other people more deserving, these are your words. Uh, when you read those things, when you hear them, do you find a reason to believe it's hard for people to believe that, again, this is nothing but contrition? Absolutely, I do understand it. And it is a contrition. Uh, you know, there are explanations, uh, you know, I, I have not been for creating more paid federal holidays that do cost 300 million bucks or more. I was for consolidating the Washington and Lincoln birthdays into one. But that now pales uh, in comparison to what, uh, what needs to be done and, and how we can help to bring uh, America together in, in, in along racial Why lines. Why didn't you come yeah. out before and say this? Uh, you know, I, Why didn't you come out, as yeah. Strom Thurmond did at yeah. one point, and say, look, I'm a changed man, yeah. I was wrong in the past, this is how well, I'm going to write it now. Let me give you some examples. On the Voting Rights Act, you mentioned that. Uh, I've always felt the Voting Rights Act should apply to the whole country, not just to one region. I understand uh, why that was true, but we should have it apply everywhere. 
And one of the things that I'm doing to try to atone for that is supporting election reform so that everybody has a chance to vote and have their votes actually count. And that's why I think we need to have fully funded uh, election reform legislation. What about affirmative action? I'm for that. I think you should reach across out the board. to be absolutely across no. the board. That's why I'm so proud of my own alma mater now, uh, University of Mississippi, that obviously had a, a difficult time in the 60s and 70s, now led by an outstanding Chancellor Robert Kayat that has gotten rid of the Confederate flag, that has now uh, has an institute of reconciliation, that has a leadership. Yeah, your votes in the past have not suggested that you were for, for affirmative action. I, I am for affirmative action, and I practice it. I have had African Americans on my staff and other minorities, but particularly African Americans, since the mid 1970s. I've had a particular program. But to, to have one-on-one on one staff, you understand the difference, though. To have a black on your staff, and to push legislation that would help African Americans, minorities right. across the board, are completely different. You know, again, you can get into arguments about timetables and quotas. Here's what I think, though. I think you've got to have an aggressive effort in America to make everybody have a chance. Harvard has a, a program where one in three of their students or alumni are children. That's, that, you know, you need to balance this out more. And I think that we should encourage minorities to have an opportunity across the board. And a number of states have done that in right. unique ways. University of Texas, I mean, Miss, uh, Texas is one of them. Let me take another break. We'll be back right after this. Back with Senator Trent Lott. You, you were making an interesting observation just a moment ago in the commercial break. Did you share that? Hey, look, I, I have a, a lot of uh, good friends, uh, young African Americans, uh, businessmen and women, people in my state that I have reached out to and, and helped and, and can continue to help. A number of them are speaking up about it. And, uh, and it, it really it hurts me now to, for people to have the impression that I don't really care. But you also you made the suggestion and, and, that you didn't believe that your voting record. Well, I, yeah, that's what I'm saying. My actions, I think, uh, don't reflect my voting record. I have actually tried very hard to be uh, an affirmative action participant, a person who believes so your in Your voting it. rights record, uh, record is very much your action, though, Senator. Well, that's, not? That's, that, well that's true. Uh, but uh, I hope that, uh, you know, and that now being I can said, make don't you correction. think that that speaks louder? You know, my actions and directly trying to help individuals and and schools and communities and uh, education in my state and uh, community development and infrastructure and to create jobs so that people can get up out of poverty and get a good education and get a job and be able to do more for their children doesn't isn't that a commitment that really matters but you know let me go back to uh, the point uh, the basic point I went, when I went to my home church uh, on Sunday uh, the preacher talked about the seasons of life the good times the bad times mm -hmm. and a time for correction uh, there's a there's a period where you and that's the you season you're in now. That's the season I'm So what in. do you do now with about two minutes left, Senator, to correct it for African Americans in particular, but for America, quite frankly, we'll, we're a better nation if all are included. I hope that maybe this bad experience for me, the mistake I made, will wind up uh, helping lead to better relations and and improvements. And will you take a closer done... look at the people you align yourself with? Absolutely, I will, and I will listen to and and talk to. Um, African American leaders and African American men and women every, uh, across, and other minorities. Will you take another look at groups like the Council of Conservative Citizens? Absolutely. I, I you know, I absolutely will uh, do that. Uh, what about Charles Pickering, who you back very strongly, absolutely. quite frankly? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I did back him uh, because he is a fine man uh, with a, an outstanding record who actually took risks with his own life to and, and, and I, actions but, against the. But Klan. you know where I'm going with I that do. question. Sure. You would take another look at him now? I, I know his heart. He is a good man who, and is not a, a racist or segregationist in any way. Uh, the things, many of the things said about against him, he, he was not uh, guilty of. But having said that, uh, you know, I'll have to weigh all my actions uh, differently and more carefully. You said uh, during your press conference you would not step down uh, for something that you believe yourself not to be. If the president calls, and ask that you step aside for the party's sake, would you? I think it would be a mistake. I don't believe he would do that. He says uh, he won't. And uh, I think that it's more important for me to stay in the job I've been elected to and show that I can make a difference. Yet I'm asking people to forgive my mistake and give me a chance, see if I can make a difference, if I can really help people uh, 
feel better about uh, uh, our society, our government, and about me. Announced today, January 6, your colleagues will meet your Republican colleagues to see if indeed you can remain the face of the Republican Party. Many of them believe you to be out, some of them believe you to be out of step. Do you believe you'll survive that? That uh, meeting was one that I uh, urged and supported because obviously we've got to sit down and talk about this. You know, it's, it's not enough for me to say we're going to do things differently. I've you got to have my colleagues it? to join me. Yes, I do. Uh, because of what I'm going to say, what I'm going to do, and, uh, and I think this actually can help us move an agenda that will be good for America, all Americans, equal opportunity for everybody, right. uh, an improved society, and uh, I'm going to work to make that happen. All right, Senator Trent Lott, thanks for joining us this evening. Thank Great you very much, Ed. And thank you for joining us. Log on to BET.com and let us know your thoughts and opinions in the chat room. And stay tuned for BET News special reaction to the Lott controversy. BET News anchor Jackie Reed will host it.